hath pleased Almighty God to take unto himself the soul of our brother here departed, we therefore commit his body to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. In sure and certain hope of his resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Almighty God, who has revealed thine only begotten Son as the resurrection of life, raise us up oh, to him, we beseech thee. She's taking it very hard, the death of sin, sin to the life she might, of righteousness. It was her sheen that brought down Lama to the sorry path. Well, we couldn't have helped him very much. We may rest in him. As our hope is, so our brother does. What an awful change in him after Sheila had and that, that baby. At the last, we may receive the blessing to see him just well done, pining away. Good and didn't servant. pine away, Mrs. Mackey died very sudden. It may have been sudden to other folks. Enter thou into I the saw it coming for a long Lord. time, Mr. Grant this, we beseech thee, O merciful Father, through Jesus Christ. I had Christ such our high Vigor expectations for her. There was no sacrifice too great for him to make for her. But was she grateful? <laughs> ah, it's a terrible thing, ingratitude. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Say something. <laughs> Mrs. Lamond, I'm sorry. If there's anything I can do. Haven't you done enough already? If it hadn't been for you, Dad would still be alive. Uh, you tried to kill me too. Mom. Oh, shut up! You're no better than he is. <laughs> You still want me to drive you to night classes? I won't be going to night classes now. I'll have to get a job. Someone will need to bring a wage into the house. Come on, Sheila. I'll walk home with you. I did love my dad, Mrs. Blair. I'll never be able to tell him now. Oh. It wasn't my fault that he died, was it? Don't be daft. Dan had a heart attack, that's all. That triggered it off. Eddie, his own temper triggered it off. If it hadn't been brought on by one thing, it would have been brought on by another. Look, Dan was never a man who could keep his temper in check. I wish I could look at it that way. You're going to have to, Eddie. It's the only way you can look at it. And what's brought you here today, then, Inverdarach? Ach, uh, well, I was just passing, and I thought... Oh, uh... that must have been sore for you, Inverdarach. <laughs> I met Morag on the way. She was with a man. Oh. Well, I hope this isn't going to be a bit of scandal that you're giving us. No, 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 no. She said it was her father's cousin. He kept telling her to call him Uncle Willie. And you came over here to tell us that? Well, she said if I was passing to call in and tell you they'd be down after dinner. Oh, well, you can't take after Jamie, then, for Jamie would have made sure he was here for his dinner. <laughs> you, uh, you don't think he's really ill, do you? Jamie? No, never. Uh, he's been kidding all of us for long enough that he wasn't well. It looks as if this time he's maybe managed to kid himself. <laughs> there was something else that Uncle said. I don't suppose for a moment it's true, is it? Well, what are you on about, man? Ah, it's not true, then. I knew it wasn't. <laughs> you knew what wasn't true? About Morag and Dougal. He said they were engaged. <laughs> oh, did he not? Stupid. And what's stupid about the idea of Dougal and Morag getting engaged? She's a fine girl. Oh, I'd be the last person to disagree with you there, Mrs. Lachlan. Now, but we all know how things stand between Morag and Dougal. Oh, is that a fact? Ach, you've had this understanding with her for years now that's been off more often than it's been on. More of a misunderstanding, I'd say. I mean, the, the thought of you being engaged. I mean, really, truly engaged. <laughs> I hope you're not disparaging my engagement to Miss Stuart of Mosdarach in Verdarach. 
But it is true, then. Would I say it if it wasn't? You're a tailor from the Glendaric estate, are you? That's right. And what are you doing here? We're ranching this loch. You must be snedding a letter fallach. Right, first time. You'll have heard I'm looking for staff. Aye, I have that. I haven't got a water bill. Well, you need one. A lot of good fishing on letter fallach. You fancy a change? How do you know if I'm any good? I've been asking around. You know I'm not just the water bailiff. No, you're the gamekeeper as well. That's a lot for one man. I get through it. Well, I haven't got a gamekeeper either. If you're keen to do the two jobs, I could give you a trial and see how you worked out. I don't much fancy being on trial. You wouldn't have anything to worry about, so long as you measured up. You think you can? Oh, I'm sure I can. What do you say, then? No. I see. You'd rather work for a woman that doesn't know what she's doing, rather than a man that does, eh? You say so. But I heard you work for a woman as well. I'm the boss at Letter Fallock. I heard you it was owned by a young woman. No. Her husband. But he won't be spending any time there, so I'm in full charge. Isn't his wife living at the lodge? That's all she does. Lives there. See, I don't take orders from women. Is it all right if I have a look at the rent rolls, Mum, please? Why? Well, they are a major part of the estate's business, aren't they? Yes. Well, can I have a look at the rent rolls then, please? I suppose so. Lorna has them. Yes, I know, but I don't want to do anything without your approval, do I? I approve, but do try to be tactful when you ask Lorna for them. She is rather touchy at the moment. I will be very tactful, Mum, and be sure to say please and thank you. I should hope so. It's what you were brought up to do. Anything interesting in the letter you got from your father this morning? Not really. What makes you ask? Nothing. Just that you usually say something about his letters, even if it's just that he sends his regards. Yes, he does. Good. Actually, I feel as though I've been neglecting him a bit lately. I think I'd better pay him a flying visit soon. Why just a flying visit? <sighs> I don't have time for a real one. I've got my work cut out for me here, sorting out from this lot. Now, what is it you want now, Mr. Snedden? Nothing that concerns you, Mrs. I want to see your son. Well, I'm quite sure he doesn't want to see you. And I'm surprised you have the cheek to show your face in this house again after what happened the last time. I've all the cheek I need to get what I want. But I don't remember anything untoward happening the last time I was here. Well, you may not have a memory like an elephant, but you're certainly going to hide like one. Dougal was furious with you. Well, I remember he was a bit put out, but it can't have been anything I said. All I did was offer him the lease on a farm. What's in that to make a man furious? It was old Hugh Imry's farm you were offering to him. Do you think my son would have anything to do with putting old Hugh off his farm? He doesn't have to have anything to do with it. I'll attend to that. You're set on evicting him, then? It's not a question of eviction. His lease is up. I'm just not renewing it, that's all. And what would that mean to Hugh? he would just have to go, won't he? What if he doesn't? Well, that's another matter entirely. You'd get a court order and evict him, wouldn't you? No, no. I don't believe in those things. They're a waste of time and money. But there are quicker ways. What ways? Well, I could maybe make life a bit awkward for him, so he wouldn't want to hang on. I hope I'm not understanding you correctly, Mr. Snedden. Oh, you think I'm threatening him? Why well, wouldn't do that? But if you see him, you being so close and all that, tell him to get ready to move out as soon as he can. Well, I'll not stay where I'm not wanted. But if, uh, if you see that son of yours, tell him I called. I'm not a vindictive man. The offer's still open, but it won't stay open forever. Good day to you, ma'am. Oh. That 
was a terrible buffet Mrs. Lamb had served up. Aye. Well, boiled ham was a bit dry. I think she'd have more respect for the dear departed than serve up such skimpy wee sandwiches. You know, it's a funny thing, but four people there asked me what my name was. I'm sure they all know what your name is, Mr. Murdoch. Aye, but it was my first name they wanted to know. Mm. It's been happening a lot lately. The first one to do it was Archie Mingus when I signed the accounts for the lifeboat fund. Well, it's a wonder the whole village doesn't know by now. Archie Mingus isn't one to keep things to himself. Never told him. Quite right, too. He's not the sort of person you'd want to be on too familiar terms with. Seems awfully interested in what my initials stand for. Mm. Now everybody is. Your initials are O.A., aren't they? That's right. What do they stand for? Fiona's interfering more and more with my work all the time. And she's found fault with the way I do everything. I don't think I can take much more of it. Well, Mrs. Cunningham doesn't think you're inefficient, and that's what matters. Otherwise, you wouldn't have held on to this job for so long, would you? I don't know. Anyway, she wouldn't have given you the added responsibilities of handling the rents. Oh, um, I'm sorry to bother you both with your lunch, but Lorna, I was wondering if you could let me have the rent rolls, please. Why? I just want to have a look at them. It's all right. My mum knows I want to see them and she approves. Oh. Thank you. Have you uh, finished with my books yet? No, not yet. They're a bit of a mess, Ken. Oh, yes. I'm not a bookkeeper, Fiona. I'm a, I'm a mechanic. Well, I'd have said that was blatantly obvious in the state of your bookkeeping. I'll be finished with them soon, but I think I've seen enough already to know that we'd better have a chat when I have. Thanks. What did he mean when he said he'd make things difficult for Hugh Emery? Well, I don't know. But I wouldn't put anything past that man, Snedden. Mm -hmm. If he lays a finger on old Hugh... Well, he couldn't do much worse to him than put him off his farm now, could he? Mm -hmm. Would you hurry up with your dinner, please, Dougal? Who is it's always telling me it's bad to rush your food? And why should I hurry it anyway? Well, you know Morag is bringing her Uncle Willie over here, and I want the place tidy when they get here. If he's anything like Jamie, he won't care whether the place is tidy or not. All he'll care about is whether the kettle's on and the bottle's not empty. Well, he'll be a wee bit like you then, won't he? Is there any tea in that pot? Oh, aye, there's a cupful left, I think. Oh, well, I'll just take it then. Oh, that's them already. Aye, I suppose oh. it will be. This is Latin. This is my Uncle Willie. Oh, I'm pleased to meet you, Mr. Stewart. No, just you call me Willie, Mrs. Lachlan. Ah, oh, we can't have a good-looking woman like yourself. Calling me Mister. <laughs> and you'll be Dougal, eh? Aye, aye, that's right. Eh? <laughs> the man has been lucky enough to win the hand of my cousin's pretty young daughter. Oh, aye, aye, aye. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, if I had been 20 years younger, I would have given you a run for her myself. Oh, I see you've got the tea on. I've just had the last cup. Aye, but the kettle's still on the stove. And it won't take long to make another one, will it, Mrs. No, Lach? no, not at all. <laughs> and, and where are you from, Mr. Stewart? Everywhere and nowhere. I'm... Uh, I'm a travelling man, Dougal. And just you call me Willie. Or Uncle Willie. <laughs> See as how you're soon to be one of the family. Aye, 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 I'll do that, uh, Mr. Stewart. Uh, how's your father, Morag? Doctor's still in his bed. And the best place for him. No one doesn't he know it. A life of toil has taken it out of him, Mrs. Lockler. Oh, I see a terrible big change in him. No wonder. You haven't seen him for 40 years. Yeah. He's a terrible bad colour. Oh, he was quite rosy-cheeked the last time I saw him. Blood pressure, Mrs. Lockler. Ah, the blood pressure. Oh, 
I'd like to ask uh, Mrs. Cunningham on the phone. Oh, what did she want? Well, she was wondering if I could go up and have a word with her. It's uh, about the rural. She's taking a great deal of interest in the rural these days. I'll get it. Oh. You've met my husband. Yes, sure. Is Jimmy in? No, I'm afraid not. Uh, but he might be back soon. Oh. Is it about the ferry? Uh, no, no, I've got a wee car now. Um, maybe we could take a message for him? No, thanks. It isn't urgent. Uh, look, I may be looking later or, or get him at his office. I'm sorry to have bothered you. You didn't. Oh, not at all. I'll see you out. No, it's all right. I'll see myself out. Thanks. See Bye. you again. Ah. I wonder what she wanted. Oh, she probably wanted another glimpse of me. She called him Jimmy. That's right, that's his name. She doesn't know him well enough to use his first name. Oh, dear, dear, how forward of her. Do you know, I bet they haven't been formally introduced. Now, you know fine what I mean. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. You think she's after your blue-eyed boy like everybody else? No, I don't. I hope she isn't. Oh, no, no. no. He's much too fond of Marion. I don't think you've got anything to worry about there. No, no, you've got more to worry about now. What? Oh, she's had another good look at me. The boy won't stand a chance. <laughs> <laughs> but what'll I say to Isabel when she comes? Exactly what I've said to you. But what if she won't agree to that? Well, that's the end of it, isn't it? I suppose so. Oh, by the way, I found out about the new neighbours. Letter Faller? Yes. The new owner is a man called Harry Shaw. Oh, yes. Quite well known, apparently. Perhaps not in your circles. By the name of Vincent? Vincent Shaw. No, no, just Vincent. It's his professional name. He's a famous pop singer. Good gracious. I hope that doesn't mean that the estate's going to be swarming with reporters from now on. Oh, I shouldn't think so. Anyway, there's only his wife in residence at the moment. He's on tour in America. <laughs> Lord. Oh, that's you, is it? Clever of you to notice that, Mrs. Mack. You'll well, come to fix that boiler at last, I suppose. You said you would. Uh, I will, but I haven't got my tools with me now. But what do you hear from then? Well, I was passing the hall and I remembered something. Hmm? You see, I'd been going around the village giving folk the chance to win a grand prize. And I suddenly remembered I'd forgotten the one person who most deserves to win. Who was that then? Need you ask. Now, for as little as 20 p... Is this another of your gambling ventures, Archimers? Certainly not, Mrs. Mack. It's a game. Oh. It's a game we used to play at school. The teacher would show you a doll and ask you to guess its name, and the one that guessed it right got the doll to keep. Oh, well, you're wasting your time with me. I stopped playing with dollies years ago. The prize isn't a dolly, Mrs. Mack. I was just explaining the principle of the thing. Aye, but you still have to guess the name of a dolly. No, Mrs. Mack, you have to guess the name of Mr. Murder. What? His first name, that is. <laughs> but don't worry. I mean, if you guess it right, it's no him you get to keep. <laughs> oh, well, uh, I'll come back later if you're busy, Mrs. Mack. No. Uh, no, she's no, and I'm just going. Uh, I'll fix your boiler soon, Mrs. Mack. Mm -hmm. See you. You can often see Archie Mingus in a hurry. He must be going somewhere important. I think he's just in a hurry to escape. Escape? Oh. Mm -hmm. Don't think any man would be in a hurry to escape from you, Mrs. Mack. Oh, from me? From you? Why would he want to escape from me? Because he's been bandying your name, or rather your initial, all around the village. Do you know why everybody's been asking what your first name is? No. Because Archie Mingus is running a competition to see who can guess what the O stands for. Like they used to do with dollies at school. Exactly. Oh, it's an outrage, Mrs. Mike. That's what it is. The chick of it. Next time I see that man, I'll, I'll set my dogs on him. It's half past three. Mr. Stewart, you've been here for hours. Do you not think it was about time you were getting back down to the croft? I'm not in your way, am I? No, no, not at all. Then I'll not rush away. I'm fine and comfortable where I am. Well, it was Morag I was worried about. Will she not be expecting you back? No, no, she knows fine I'm here and that you won't let me starve to death. <laughs> or to tell you the truth, Grace, you don't mind if I call you Grace. 
I just couldn't stand poor old Jamie's miserable face all the afternoon. Oh, hello. hello, Alice. Where's Dormont? Oh, uh, he's playing outside. Oh, good. Alice, this is Jamie Stewart's cousin, Willie. Oh. Alice is Dougal's sister-in-law. Uh, by his first marriage. Then you'll be family too, Alice. Well, uh, in a way. <laughs> it's awful sad about Jamie being struck down just when his only daughter's going to get married. Oh, but he'll be up and about long before that happens. I'm sure he will try. We've got a lot of willpower, us Stuarts. But from what I've seen of him, I'll be surprised if he lasts long enough to hear the wedding bells from his bed of sickness. Oh, but he can't stay in his bed that day. He'll have to be in the church to give the bride away. I see you're a woman that takes the optimistic view no matter what happens. Oh, but all that's been taken care of. I have promised Jamie that if the worst comes to the worst, as it's certain to do, I will stand in his place proudly. Uh, would you like a cup of tea, Alice? Uh, that'd be fine. I'll have one as well if there's one in the pot. You know, I've been a travelling man all my life, and I'm just beginning to realise what I've been missing. For the first time in years, I feel as if I belong in a real family again. And I'll come and see you as often as I can, Mrs. Laughlin. And you too, Alice. Yes, but I don't want to say anything to Brian till I'm sure he's got a chance of getting a hearing. I'm afraid it can't be done that way, Isabel. But why not? Because Mr. Carradine won't know whether there is a chance until he talks to Brian. Is there no other way? He has to know what grounds there are for trying to make an appeal. Oh, but I could tell him that. I'm sorry, but he says he would have to talk to Brian as well. It would just be so terrible to raise his hopes. I know, but it has to be Brian who asks for the appeal. He's the one who was sentenced, Isabel, not you. Uh, I know he was. Although I think it should have been the other way around. Well, looks like there's nothing else for it. I'll have to talk to Brian. <laughs> 